Welcome to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners uh, Transportation Committee special call meeting as of Monday, November 5th, 2018. Uh, we just have um, a, a couple of uh, items that we're going to discuss here. Um, we rarely have special call meetings, but every now and then there is a, an ex expedient reason why we need to move, um, move in such a way um, as to align with an agenda, an opportunity in front of the full board of commissioners to make a decision um, or some other matter that may be driving it. That being said, um, let's get right into this. Um, we have the minutes from the last meeting. Okay. Um, has everybody had a chance to take a look at them? Yes. Can I get a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that would carry. Motion carries. All right, first item up, let's jump into it. And we got to stay on time because we've got a work session right behind us that they've got to prepare for. All right, Mr. Chairman, uh, the first item on the agenda is a uh, truck parking uh, uh, issue uh, that has developed and uh, has really started to take off more recently, I would say within the last six months or so. Um, this is related particularly and emanating from the new regulations that require uh, drivers, truck drivers, uh, limit their hours of operation and then they have to get off the road. Uh, it used to be that they could, uh, they could log in the times that they were driving versus the time that they were off the road. Uh, with the new regulations, they are required to do that electronically. So now it is much more urgent for them to find a place to park their, their uh, rigs. And to that end, uh, there's been some discussion at the Atlanta Regional Commission as to where to locate these facilities, what amenities should be incorporated into the facilities when, and what issues do we have to deal with related to the facilities and locally there's been some discussion um, and uh, the, the staff has put together some uh, recommendations as well that will be taken up in the near future but as a as a preamble to all of that I, I've invited uh, uh, Mr. Roberts to give us a little background on how these things came about and uh, where we're going from here. Okay, before we get into that, so again, I want to be specific about this agenda item. Mm -hmm. um, give me a little bit more clarity. Is this, this is just a frame? There won't be any action taken? Is Correct. Is just more of a, just a framing? Yeah, just a framing for action to be taken in the future. Commissioner Walker, are you okay with that objective? Yes, yeah. As long as we cover the agendas, Items that are correct, so we have to keep this time. Go, mm -hmm. cool. Mr. Roberts. Um, so I have printed up some executive summaries. The Atlanta Regional Commission spent uh, about four years looking at uh, truck parking in the Metro Atlanta region, um, and I'll save you the, from going through the whole 150-page document. But um, yes, there's a, as Miguel alluded, there is a, an issue with the ELDs electronic. Um, devices that are on the trucks. Um, there's a, definitely a need for uh, truck parking. Um, we, have, uh, we have put together a, an, an amendment to the UDC, which was tabled last month and we'll be um, discussing on Thursday. Um, I think that the, when you look at the um, traffic on Thornton Road and and coming in through Cobb and Fulton and everything else there Douglas County is definitely um, uh, one of those counties that uh, is in need of, uh, of some codes around the truck parking and that's why we, that's why staff has put the, the codes together to uh, discuss on Thursday so Miguel, what, what, and thank you for that. So with that being said, on, on this particular agenda item, um, we've got a meeting coming up on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, there's an application, an applicant for board planning and zoning and board commissioners, uh, which is more 
immediate for a, I think it's off a Macintosh, right? Mm -hmm. right? So you've got that area. Uh, so you've got an applicant who wants his situation addressed by the board and make a decision. Then there's this broader regional issue about parking in general, right? How do we accommodate them? If we choose to accommodate them, we're thinking we should, but the board has to render that, right? Correct. There's the broader need to, what do we do about this regional issue that we know that will only get, um, you'll have to address even more and more and more, right? Um, mm -hmm. um, then there was a conversation, Commissioner Walker, you and I had that says, what about, that's people who are passing through, and what about accommodating our people who live here? Mm -hmm. um, and um, who, rightfully so, they you know, pay taxes, and so therefore they're wanting to accommodate, we're basically making them go somewhere else by default, um, because they're parking illegally in, or by default, um, um, you know, um, etc. So, are we, are we, so here's my question, this is why I want to bring this up. If we go down this path, um, a decision on the applicant on Thursday, does that force us down a path that says, but have we really taken the time to really think through this issue and how we're going to address it, uh, especially from a planning and zoning perspective? And I mean, if we accommodate the, the applicant and whatever that decision is, that's fine. But what if later we get into this thing and we have a different, I mean, how does that work? I mean, Mr. Mulcair, do we? Yeah, it's the, the really two different, I say perceive them as two different things. You have your, your uh, truck parking uh, for transit operations, people are, you know, they made it through uh, the perimeter around Atlanta, coming from uh, South Carolina or whatever, and it's, their time has run out and it's time for them to park. Yep. Uh, we need to have some something that accommodates them in transiting as, as they go to Texas or, you know, wherever they're going. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one issue that, that uh, we need some, I think, policy guidance around. Uh, we will hear the applicant whose who's, uh, proposal really is about uh, contract uh, commercial parking uh, for people who uh, mostly live here. It's not restricted, but there's, uh, it's designed to uh, offer a benefit, a discount benefit to people who, truck who actually live in Douglas County, and that would hopefully relieve you know, truck parking in our diesel lanes or subdivisions. And mm -hmm. uh, I drove by one last night, uh, uh, came by a, a tractor that was parked outside the subdivision. Uh, and uh, so that's a different, that's kind of a different issue. And I don't know, if, I'm not so sure that they maybe they require different uh, standards uh, and, and maybe not. Um, Does a map change or, or something yeah. that we may do? Uh, yeah. this applicant have? Um, a future impact to the broader picture. In other words, are we set the precedent in such a way that we think we could, I mean, you know me, I don't have a problem going back and reamending what we made a decision on, but, mm -hmm. but it, I mean, sometimes do we take time out to fix the bigger picture, go back to what we did on Fulton Road with sort of the whole master plan, we put a moratorium in place until we can get our minds around this. So I guess my question is, does it necessitate uh, a more thoughtful, let's wait, let's get our minds around this bigger picture and then everything else falls in line, or are we going, I, again, I'm, I'm looking at the precedent we've set in decision making, right? We, we, we said time out. I know we paused on the UDC here uh, uh, from last time to this time, but again, this is not our first time doing this. Yeah, yeah. So. it's, uh, it's kind of like, uh, I think a, a defendant has a right to a speedy trial. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a similar situation. And we're not talking about criminality here, we're just talking about public, you know, yeah. public accommodation service. And, to a, a lawfully submitted application. So this has kind of been, uh, this uh, UDC uh, revision has been, you know, heard once and, and tabled. And uh, I, my, my concern would be that we apply a standard of fairness uh, to this to this policy. Uh, we recently, this year, I, I couldn't give you a date, approved a pretty, pretty large uh, uh, warehouse. Uh, facility. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner, you remember that one? I'm trying to think. Yeah. Uh, I can see the map. Where uh, was it at? Uh, it was on the it was on the east side of the county. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And it required some road improvements. The Rockefeller Group? Was it DCT or DCT? I think, I, think, I, think, I think it was that one. It is. It was going there. Yeah. Okay. So how does that 
there's a difference between a you know a warehousing facility and a parking facility but to me the touch point is the, the parking density on this property and what we're requiring is in terms of buffers and stuff and okay. the, the present uh, uh, proposed code for this uh, commercial entity is, is requiring I think um, perhaps an onerous uh, buffering requirement over 100 feet yes yeah, 200 200 feet and uh, presently the with well, the DCT uh, did I get there? <laughs> Yeah. Is that right? Uh, that you know that facility is, is going to have more trucks and more trucks uh, idling. I don't think there's any buffer requirement for that. So that's that's one particular issue we we need to uh, uh, address uh, as we go and try to stay uniform and, and fair between our uh, 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 policy applications. If I may offer, uh, from my perspective, from from a mobility standpoint, from uh, from a road network standpoint. I have two concerns as it relates to truck uh, mobility, maneuverability as a whole, regardless whether they're local or uh, just passing through. One is, does the road that we are designating for them uh, or by default uh, targeting for them to operate out of, does that road have the structural capacity to handle the loading associated with those vehicles so that's one element yep mm -hmm. the other one is understood are the roads leading to the facility able to uh, allow the turning movements with the radii that's needed uh, perhaps uh, depending on their location you might prefer to have a signalized intersection for them to turn yep. off of a main highway so those are the elements that concern me, and, and they are the same for whether it's a local tandem or a semi that's trekking through town. Now, our code, and we'll have a discussion about this as some of the agenda items at, at the board meeting later, but our code has certain restrictions inherent in uh, the roadway classification, and that is taken into account the structural capacity of the roadway and also the type of neighborhood that the trucks would go through. So uh, our code designates only state routes on the interstate for truck traffic. Those are the official routes that are allowed uh, or flagged that truck traffic can operate out of. That is local traffic through traffic. Now, any facility that is in the county uh, that generates the need for uh, trucking operations of whatever magnitude has the ability to veer off of those roads and utilize local roads to do the business that they do. So to that end there is a secondary type of, uh, of uh, road system that is sort of target it for that type of operation and that would be arterial roads mm -hmm. so you go from the interstate and state routes to local arterial roads and that's where when they veer off and they have to do some local uh, deliveries or operate out of the uh, area that those are the roads that are designated for them to operate out of uh, there are restrictions further beyond that for parking on residential areas. Okay. There are restrictions on roads for trucks over six wheels and that, that sort of thing. So there are tiers. In this particular case, this type of facility will be concentrating that type of operation wherever they are approved. And so for me, those are the main elements that give me concerns that should be addressed. Yeah, and I, I wholeheartedly agree. We're we're, uh, we're talking about two different things: existing policy, which I think are valid and should be applied, and should be uh, diverted from with uh, with, uh, with only very serious consideration. Uh, otherwise, they should they should be adhered to. So I'm 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 fine with that. Um, but then we have the present uh, proposed uh, code or policy that's being established. Uh, over and above, you know, at a, at a different level than what you're talking about. So I, I don't dispute what you're saying at all. 
uh, but we're adding some stipulations uh, in terms of UDC. So uh, I don't want to belabor, but yes, uh, we're, we're going to hear uh, a plenty, I think, Thursday night. Will you be there? I will. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, let, let's, yeah, duly noted, and thank you for, for that input, um, Director. I, I think about airplane hangars, and I think about runways, I think about skyways, right? And, and we've, we're evolving. Right, as as, as um, local municipalities, and I, I, I listen, but I'm like, but we're evolving. Mm -hmm. We have federal law that's requiring this, and they're pushing it down for us to be able to accommodate. And we, we're designing our local world in a way that makes certain assumptions about how the world will flow. And, and now we're over. I'm like, okay, this ain't gonna line up like we think. And, and, and I, I foresee. I need to accommodate, I mean, it's almost like having dedicated bus routes, having dedicated truck routes. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's they're, they're rolling in their own worlds, they're, they're running in parallel, but at this restrict, I mean, that's the conversation I want to have about this restrictiveness. I, I'm, um, I, I think that a, a person has a right, if I'm a truck owner, and I'm, I'm really, I'm going to argue about the truck owner who lives in the community, less about trying to, the commercial, uh, trying to empower the, lo uh, the local enterprise, put that to the side. I'm thinking about the guy who lives here locally. This is what I do. My truck is my owner occupied in some cases, um, you know, vehicle. And how do we accommodate that guy that we now said, but you, because you are this, you must go here. And again, our design of our community never, we, get, we just never did anticipate the fact that everybody just doesn't have a car and that it neatly fits in this one little box. And that there are people who actually do things while we sleep 24-7 um, that they need to be accommodated. And so I won't belabor this, but I, I think that that's what I'm saying. There's a policy conversation that needs to be had about the long picture. I get your point about the enterprise. We'll deal with that on, on Thursday. I just wanted to bring this up. I want us as the transportation committee to weigh in on this and, and have a position and be more enlightened. Um, but we can't yeah. believe this one too long. We got to sure. keep going with this agenda. Agenda, yeah. You okay? Yeah. Ron, thank you for your comments. You can stay, but I mean, I want to thank you for the executive summary. Yeah, I just would ask is, is there something that, uh, I mean, other than the, the normal preparations for this, anything y'all would like to see or on Thursday? Heads up or? You sort of heard our angle here, so. Yeah, yeah. Be, be prepared for questions about yeah. the, sure. uh, where, you know, warehouse parking and a number of trucks and more the, recent uh, approved projects, the number of trucks and highways right. and so forth. I've looked into those. And, uh, talked. and uh, truck per acre densities and uh, island times and all that. You know, mm -hmm. are we being fair uh, okay. equivalent, you know? Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, Joe. We always give Yes. Um, the second item on the agenda is a, a position that we are seeking to reclassify in the Transit Services Division. Uh, the position of transit services coordinator, which uh, which was advertised, and, and in fact we've talked to some uh, applicants, and um, it, it turns out that we really need to take a look at it because uh, it is just not yielding the results that uh, we were looking for. And uh, I will ask uh, <coughs> Gary to uh, go into more detail as it relates to the specifics. Sure. <coughs> We have two positions uh, that we're trying to fill, hoping to fill. One is the transit services coordinator who will oversee the bus service. That position is in the 2018 budget already. Mm -hmm. The second position is compliance officer to help us with the ever increasing uh, burden of federal transit administration uh, requirements. That uh, position has been included as one of our 2019 budget improvement requests. Um, as Miguel said, we've been interviewing candidates for the transit services coordinator position. Uh, we received about 12 applications. We've interviewed two candidates. Both of those candidates are very well qualified and we believe they would do us an excellent job the issue that that we're finding is this we posted the salary for that position at fifty five thousand dollars annually and this, in talking with the the two candidates that we've interviewed uh, we're realizing that we've undervalued that position uh, the salary that they're looking at is 
is 70 upwards. So faced with that, Miguel and I have had some conversations um, thinking of the possibility of combining the two positions, transit service coordinator and compliance officer uh, into one at a salary around $70,000. Um, we believe that of the candidates that we have interviewed, both of, of them could handle these two jobs uh, without any, any difficulty. In fact, one of the candidates is already doing these two uh, things at, at their uh, current employment. So that's what we wanted to bring to the committee this morning to, to get your thoughts on the possibility of combining these two positions into one. If I may add, uh, what because we have already uh, had some interviews and, and found some pretty well qualified individuals, uh, there would be an urgency in trying to reclassify this position to be able to offer it to one of the uh, qualified applicants. And uh, uh, there is sufficient funding in the current budget because of savings uh, in salaries to be able to handle that. Uh, for the remainder remainder of the year, uh, of course, there would be an adjustment needed uh, the following year, uh, but it would actually be less than the adjustment that we were looking for uh, with the additional position that we had requested, uh, but now would not be necessary. Um, all right. So again, I wanted to make sure I understood. Uh, that this is really not two positions, it's one position that does exist that we approved, and the other one we haven't created yet, that it's to be created. Correct. Oh, it was in the 2019 okay. budget. All right, that, that, but that, so then I, there's really no savings because we haven't created the one, right? In other words, you have one position, right, that we're applying, we got 12 people out and two qualified, right? And we don't have the second position because it's to be created, right? Correct. Correct. Or not seen it, so there's no real savings. So I want to make sure for the record that the people who are listening to this, that this is not about a savings. Really, this is just an amendment to the existing budget. We may have some net net savings, uh, but this is an amendment to the budget to accommodate uh, a, a new hire. Here's my thoughts, and this is, I've had a chance to really think about this one. And I let this come forward because like, okay, I know how important this was. Um, we, we have this bus system coming online and we it was proposed to us that this this role was very important by itself to focus solely on that system to have somebody who's going to be the go between between staff and uh, our third party operator that was their sole focus right then we had a separate conversation about um, keeping up with grants and because some of the things we've gone through uh, as uh, an operation we're keeping up with C's having more organized. I mean, in other words, there's a, there's a standard here. We know that typically grants have um, baked into them people who keep up with that type of thing, right? Keeping up with money. Two functions that we deemed very important by themselves. What I'm hearing is that we're, we're proposing to combine them. And I, I don't know if I, Ms. Mulcair, I don't agree with that. I mean, just, just like, but you argued that these two could stand alone, that they're required by themselves. And so I'm always careful when I'm like, okay, is it just the <coughs> amendment? And that, let it be that. <coughs> but when we start pushing things together, just for the sake to make it feel good as a conversation, I, I get concerned. Um, I, I get concerned because I, I agree with the merit of those are two functions, two positions that we did need when they came online. Um, let's assume that this uh, system begins to grow, all right, and um, for whatever reason. But then there's other things that are growing outside of it as well as the county begins to evolve. I have a, fun, I, I have a problem with, wait a minute, this person will be, don't mess up this bus system. And then you got everything else, and I'm thinking, and I hear that other people, they do this, but, um, they, they do it. I, I don't know enough about what they do, how it's combined, how big their county guys are, what type of growth they're going through. So I, I hear that. I, I just wanted to put that out there that I, I, I don't support combining. I'll support the card in conversation if you want the amendment and the amount. Let's talk about that. Let's get the market price right. But I, 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 
I'm not, I don't think that's going in the right direction to try to combine them or to make it a quick sell, but let me pause. Yeah, I think uh, where they originally presented to us, uh, they, they did uh, uh, they did present before us, a, you know, a need, right. you know, in, in both categories. Right. And, and, and well justified, right. you know, as, as an operation going forward and maturing and, and growing and added responsibility and so forth. Uh, so I too am concerned about the uh, the mechanism of combining. It sounds like to facilitate a, uh, an immediate hire uh, would be facilitated by this kind of change in philosophy. Uh, I hear what you're saying about about the salary and the need to adjust that uh, to be make Douglas County marketable uh, to a, to a hire and, and get the best person in here. Uh, so I would hold in advance the idea that we need to uh, combine these uh, positions, uh, but I wouldn't object to uh, uh, increasing the, uh, the salary level for this transit services coordinator position. Uh, maybe experiment might be an appropriate word, uh, you know, temporarily in, into some uh, compliance uh, oversight and that sort of thing. Uh, but I think the primary responsibility needs to be the transit services coordinator at, at an elevated uh, salary point. Well, I'd certainly, my preference would be to have both both positions because uh, both are very important in our scheme of things moving forward. Our, our concern, uh, as we would present it to the board, is that not only would we, we be increasing the uh, transit services coordinator positions pay considerably, but based on what we're we're finding out, we would have to do the same thing for the compliance officer as we move forward with them in 2019. And, uh, and to that point, uh, Mr. Walker, you and I mm -hmm. maybe had a conversation. Uh, I mean, it's becoming an employee's market, uh, and, and so the employees have choices. Um, and, and so it's a good, I guess it's a good thing to have, um, per se, because of where you sit. Um, but um, I think the higher um, salary, did we, did we under price? And, and so I'm, I'm thinking, well, just, let's just get the price right as opposed to anything. I don't know, do you have a market pressure comment or something you want to make? Because I'm, I'm thinking, well, it sounds like we underpriced this. We're not getting the quality that we need to get this position in here, and we're on time, you know, we gotta go. We've had time, so I mean, we, we did the best we could. We went out here to the marketplace, we realized we got feedback that says, we're not gonna be able to attract people at that price point. So we can either belabor this, or we can make the decision and just uh, correct it. What do you think? Um, that, that would be my position. Move, move forward with the <coughs> increase the price point for the transit services uh, uh, coordinator. Let's not worry about com combining positions, let's get this Let's get this first uh, duck in the row. Yeah. That works for me. Would, would be my sense. All right, so $20,000 amendment, so we're going from 55 to 75. I don't know the exact number, so you, but you guys will clarify. So 70. Was the 20000 yes. increase? That's what I was going on. So what is the, what are we asking? Be I'll, specific. Just to be on the safe side, I think 20 would be good. <coughs> I'm good with All right. So we need a motion? Can I get a motion to amend um, the salary offer from fifty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any more discussion? Hope tonight. Any nays? Motion. Okay. My my next question would be, what about the agenda item for the work session this morning? Do we <coughs> just we just need to revise it when we during the meeting? Okay. We'll just we're coming with the recommendation with this, so we'll we'll just introduce our recommendation that we will sign. Mark, make sure we get mm -hmm. recommendation that we'll sign, and we'll just supplement that as we're fine with. We're good. Okay. That was the point of the meeting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to get feedback from the committee. All right, let's keep going, guys. Uh, duly noted, Miguel. Yes, sir. Uh, the next item is uh, a discussion about pavement evaluations. You might remember at the last meeting we started that discussion, and uh, uh, before we make a determination as to which way, as to, which way to go, uh, it, we're, we're going to need to continue that discussion. You may recall also that uh, uh, at the last uh, 
well, during the last budget uh, season, uh, this was an item that was discussed as, as a need, and it is a BIR uh, included in, in, our, in my uh, budget request for this year. So uh, that's, that's where we are now and what we need to address. Uh, pavement evaluations, there are many varieties of them. And uh, I think the last time that it was officially done for the county, if, if memory serves me, was around 2005. <coughs> and it was a rudimentary type of evaluation using a system uh, that's been around for, for a long, long time that is not as favored uh, as it used to be because it is uh, somewhat rudimentary. Uh, the, the issue with uh, pavement evaluation is that uh, typically, well, you have to have some training to be able to discern what you're looking at, but it is a visual inspection. And so to the extent that uh, you're, you're making a determination as to the, how the road looks, how it appears, and, and interpreting that, uh, first of all, you have to have the background to be able to do that, but secondly, you're making certain assumptions as to what it all means. Uh, you see a, a, a cracked uh, pavement, alligator uh, pavement, and uh, you, you make some assumptions as to what that means. And that goes to uh, determining a, a pavement uh, evaluation index. That, uh, the, the system that's, that's used, uh, had been used by, by the DOT, the COPASA system, has been around for, for a long, long time. But it is uh, very rudimentary, as I indicated. It looks at, I believe, uh, six or seven uh, distresses in the pavement. There are newer systems that are much more uh, robust. They look at 20 to 25 different types of distresses. And uh, there, are, there are, of course, automated uh, evaluation systems where they use ground penetrating radar to be able to discern, not just on the surface, but below the surface, what is leading to the failure. So. The issue uh, becomes, do we want to have a, a duplication of uh, just a refresh of the old system, staying with the, again, the more rudimentary system, or do we want to look at something much more robust that not only tells us uh, what the pavement condition is now, but also has the capability of generating or making certain recommendations as to what the type of treatment is. So an analogy that can be applied to it is, is sort of a, in the medical field, you, uh, you know, if you go in complaining of a chest pain, well, that's sort of at the surface, you, you got chest pain. But to go beyond that, what is leading, what is causing the chest pain takes x-rays or <coughs> MRIs or whatever other techniques. So the same with pavement evaluation. You can do a sort of two-dimensional visual inspection. You could do a more detailed uh, where you actually go and look at the pavement and you take measurements, or you can automate it. And that is a decision that we get. Okay, and, and I appreciate that. And we've had some conversations with this, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm not even sure we're just making this the mark that, that we had this conversation about the mm -hmm. initial record. Um, as I think about this, it's one of the things that we, we um, since I've been in office, and, and probably longer than uh, for Commissioner Mulk here, um, is that for the most part, citizens just care about, you know, they want to experience their tax dollars on a daily basis. And how they measure that sometimes is when they pull out their subdivision, whether it's an apartment or whether it's a, a, sub, a, a full subdivision, they, it, how they measure government is, is, is what do they come in contact immediately? It's the road. And it's about potholes. It's about like, okay, but that's how they measure us. And it's their drive, wherever they're going. I mean, we picked up on that. Everybody, you know, people can have different, you, know, you may not agree with that, but it's just something that's that simple. Like, can, can, I, can I get the potholes fixed? And so, but, but during my term being here, for the most part, we had very minimum road maintenance. We did what we could, but it, it was a function of where we were as uh, an economy. It's okay, all good. Uh, but, but with that road still deteriorated, um, we still, people were being added, they moved around, the road still needed maintaining. And like they said, some subdivisions have not been maintained since they've been built in that same period of time, even before. 
And, and while we did a good job, we know that we're behind and we're not delusional about the fact that we're behind. And that's why with this FOSS, we committed over 50% to be dedicated to what? Keep you know, dealing with that. We're, we're all good. I'm just laying the context. My, my issue when I, when I think about this is that, but if we're going to resurface the roads, there are people who, I mean, the list is arbitrary in my mind because it hasn't been refreshed. Uh, newer communities have come online. There's more load that's happening in certain subdivisions that, that have deteriorated even faster than the ones that are already on the books. And so the list that you guys come out with, Commissioner Walker, this is why I really want you to be involved in this, that I question the source or the validity of the list. And so it, it's not maintained. Our, so let's get a refresh at a minimum. But then the more I got into this conversation, I realized there was more to this. There's a longer term planning mechanism associated with roads and while you're out there, we see that the fence is bent and everything else. In other words, road maintenance, the guy that's out there looking at the pothole is looking at everything else. And so there's more to it. And I know that there's some push from Madam Chair to be more proactive out there in the streets. In other words, I mean, why does the citizen have to tell us that there's these constant roles that they tell us eight times? Why are we not capturing this? And though we say we do, we, we recognize we get phone calls. Uh, and, and so, and again, it, it comes down to also your capacity to deliver against this. It's one thing to get the refresh. It's another to say, okay, now this is getting into the, you know, transportation in general and planning long terms. Like, okay, guys, this is not just about the refresh, as I thought originally of the roads. That okay, this is a new rating. We've got a new list. This is a bigger picture. So, Commissioner Mulker, again, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to pull on you all the way till you go. Is do we need to have a more holistic pro approach to transportation operations? Uh, yeah. Is this a time to pause to say at least look at it? Doesn't mean that we're going to go there, but at least to market. No, I think uh, absolutely. Let me ask a technical question first of all. In, in, in an enhanced analysis of our roads, mm -hmm. is and this comes from my, my learning at the recent uh, state DOT commission meeting here in, in Douglas County. Mm -hmm. uh, do we analyze the composition of the asphalt and do we take uh, any type of core drillings or anything like that? We, we do not analyze the, the existing new systems, the enhanced systems. The, the, the enhanced system would not, um, would take into account what is there but not in terms of composition. It's in terms of thickness and base. Mm -hmm. So it goes to, to that extent of analysis because if you have a very solid base, a couple of inches of asphalt may hold up as well as four inches of asphalt and the base not being so good mm -hmm. on another road. Okay. So that is the level of discernment. So, so that's why you look at many different uh, other types of deficiencies and other uh, design parameters that typically go into, into a road design. Okay, to that point then, uh, using the ground scanning uh, the radar, it would it would provide analysis of, of the bed, the substrata it, of it the roads. And to me, that is, I think, probably at top of the list in terms of our road uh, de deterioration. Uh, we come from a time, uh, I'm, I'm old enough, when you just went out in the, in the mud and, you know, one inch of gravel was good enough and we just put, uh, we just put asphalt on it. Douglas County is not, not alone. Right. And, you know, and we see curvy roads because they were just, they were paved over Wagon trails in, in, in the county, mm -hmm. so all of the all of the uh, the substrata is, is suspect, and that's something that we really have not analyzed or addressed. So, to your point, uh, Chairman, uh, we need uh, an enhanced, more more robust means of, of identifying all the roads in Douglas County uh, and what their status is in terms of you know present condition and, and projecting. Uh, I think you would have the ability to project. Uh, you know, a schedule on a, on a particular road uh, and going, you know, going into the future. That's what we need, in, in my opinion, is, is the ability to do that. And we can't do that with, with the present system. Uh, I would suggest um, even uh, having a presentation uh, at, your, uh, at your leisure, Chairman, uh, a presentation of just kind of a, a primer on, on uh, similar to what we saw at uh, State DOT. Uh, because uh, all these folks were not there, I don't think. And uh, just to understand what we're talking about in terms of analysis and be able to project the need of, of paving, you know, two years out or, you know, eight years out. 
largely based on the substrata uh, mm -hmm. of, of the road. So I, personally, I think, I think this is a much needed uh, uh, initiative. To, to, to thank you. And to that point, um, I, I believe that a primer is necessary. I mean, we can bring Moreland in. Um, they're DOT experts. They've got people who work there. Could they not just come out and do us just like we went with the energy audit? You know, sometimes before we get into something, we, we believe we as board commissioners need to be educated. Can we just bring somebody in and give us a, a lunch and learn? Would you yeah. go to do a lunch That's and learn? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll even come back in. Okay. Okay, Mark. Well, we have another transportation committee meeting on November 20th. Is that the one? We no, we want to do this for the board. We want to do it for board commissioners or just board commissioners. That's what I'm thinking. Board yeah. commissioners. Lunch yeah. and learn. This is a broader topic, and all right. So this gets into my back to the long-range planning. All right. So you said this is a part of your BR, and I'm thinking, okay. And I didn't ask this question. I just heard you. This says, okay, is this is part of your um, long-range capital plan, or is it part of your normal annual operation? And again, not knowing the price tag, and it, it wasn't the point. But I'm thinking again, what is this? This what? What, what are we buying? Are we buying a one-time? To your point, refresh your sensitivity. I mean, what are we doing? Or is there a bigger modular thing here that we need to be committed to helping us get where we, we, we haven't had to go in times past? So it's not a criticism that it is not in place, but it becomes, okay, guys, what are we really committing yeah, here? Yeah, it, it, it would be uh, not only a refresh, it would be a snapshot in time with enough elements to be able to incorporate that in, in computer software to be able to predict when we're going to need uh, to go into this set of roads, these types of failures, uh, whether we need to dedicate. In fact, uh, there is software that analyzes um, if you if you have a set budget, and, and you say, okay, I have three million dollars to spend on road maintenance. It, knowing the, the condition of all of those pavements and, and based on parameters that you put in, it'll generate a list of target uh, roads. Now, one thing that is good to keep in mind, even with the existing system or an enhanced system, that is a network level analysis of the roads. It's a recommendation generated by the software. Mm -hmm. We then take that list and we go out mm -hmm. and we look at each road individually. Yep. We do that now. The, the, uh, the ratings that we have that are outdated, we use that as the initial cut. Yep. Then we go out and compare. Is it really a 24 or is it a 30? So when you get the list, it, didn't, it wasn't based or it isn't based entirely uh, on the outdated uh, uh, ratings. It's based on field verified conditions. Right. Well, and, uh, Chairman, could I uh, uh, augment his comment there? Yeah. Uh, and one thing, one part of living out as, as, you, as you present this, the concept is that then we take these numbers and we parse them and we try to distribute them out to four yes. districts. Mm -hmm. And using an impartial and objective analysis, it may be District 4 or District 1 gets twice the mileage in a given year the, the than, than another district. If, if you go by this uh, you know, objective analysis, and that's something I think the commissioners need to open their minds to, that uh, another district may need more money this year. So I, I'll leave it at that since... <laughs> You, you're good. You're good. No, and I, 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 I don't disagree with that. Again, this, um, when I came on board, it was sort of this whole notion of you know equal based on population, right? And everybody had their fair share accordingly, right? But then we we know that there's uh, once we, we we began to look at the lay of the land, uh, it, it is somewhat distorted. I don't disagree with that. I, I, I just well, why do we do that to begin with? Um, but that <laughs> that that being said. Um, um, he, and, and Commissioner Moka, but, but to your point, because you're always, but, but there's going to be a cost. So if I got to put down a better quality substrate, and now, now my cost to lay down roads just yeah. went up, mm -hmm. which means your very miles of 10 miles that we cover every year goes to seven. Yeah. Right. I mean, am I wrong in, in, in concluding? So now I'm back to this long range planning. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I need to, and when, uh, Commissioner Moka, I'm going to just say this to, you know, we, we, 
over these 10 years, 14 years that we've sat here, we react to what staff puts forth in these one-off moments, right? It's just what they need at the moment. I'm like, okay, can we do it at a long-range planning? Like, okay, can we back up for a minute and think about long-term what this means? And I, is this an opportunity for us to really look at this, not just for the moment of how to analyze this street, this little corner, this pothole segment, but how to plan and budget accordingly and based on the set of roles that's coming now, it may be a little bit more this year versus last year. Based on, I mean, I'm trying to yep. do better. I don't know how much, to, yep. and, go ahead, I won't. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Commissioner, that, that's, that's precisely what having a, a more robust uh, analysis of the existing conditions uh, will provide us. The ability to, to then plan ahead for, for the needs and, and also, in terms of whether it's going to be additional asphalt that's needed for a particular road, yeah. it may be that some of the funding, in fact, that the recommendation at the national level, the, the Asphalt Institute and others, is that you do not concentrate all of your capital on the worst roads, that you take oh. a segment of the worst so roads you it. and that's you true. spread it around yeah. and you actually address roads that are in fairly okay shape. now. You don't do the same thing to those roads as you would the others. You no. do a different type of treatment. Yes, but it this will give you the ability to plan ahead and develop a long-range program. Chairman, on that point, I've asked a question. Another technical aspect of, of the analysis, does it consider that a particular road that may be in, uh, in bad condition doesn't warrant addressment against a road that is in a little bit better condition, factoring in the traffic load. Yes. Okay. That's good. Okay. So, so to your point, traffic load, then we want to run, we're going to start putting trucks and parking trucks and so forth. Then we got buses that are going to come and perhaps that system will expand because of the broader region. And so now it's like, okay, we know we don't have to get ahead of this. And what does that mean for us? And how do I, and really, uh, I'm going to keep riding this long run capital plan. We've got a plan for it. There is going to be a cost more than we can I mean right now we're reacting and it's like okay we cannot plan it at least want to know the cost i know they may change the estimates could be off plus or minus you know i know that so i'm not trying to force a number but we can do a better a, a better job of knowing five to ten years out what the implications could be okay i won't belabor we this was good mike you good, good addition yeah be a good very good addition okay yeah awesome. Thank you. Thank you. we're good all right so then we're watching our time yeah Anything else we need to add to that one? Uh, no, sir. No, Honey, no, make sir. sure you're okay. We, we, we've agreed that we will have a presentation to the full board commission that's the next appropriate time to do a manager work out. Yes, sir. Next time, last time. Okay. The, the next item and the last item is uh, a discussion about the funding for the diverging diamond interchange design. Uh, as you know, we've uh, uh, put out an RF uh, request for uh, qualifications. Yep. And we're in the process of uh, uh, selecting the, uh, uh, the design consultant to do this work. It is uh, federally, it has federal funds in it, 80% uh, federal funds uh, initially. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, fee that they quoted us actually has uh, come in a little higher than uh, than what uh, was originally anticipated. Uh, if memory serves me, it was uh, around 235,000 that we had, and, it, and so we are in need of another 120,000 to add uh, to it. There was discussion about this item at the last uh, board, uh, I'm sorry, last transportation committee meeting, and um, I believe that um, the, the decision ultimately was that, that the additional funding would come from, uh, from SPLOST, uh, but it, I guess we, we didn't exactly determine uh, uh, which element of, of the SPLOST program it would come from, and thus uh, the need for us to revisit that discussion. Okay. Mr. Smoker, you want to weigh on this? I've got a couple of comments. Uh, I, I think we, we agreed, we talked, I remember I told yeah. you about where this was going to go, but this, yeah. we, we recognize it's been on the docket well before it's on this current docket. We should have been done with this, but okay, yeah. duly noted. Uh, I think my, I uh, reason I added this to the agenda because I wanted to make sure uh, we did not talk about it coming out of economic development 
the economic development was clearly designated to a specific area. Um, and, and while I have no problem with studies like um, um, housing studies and economic development studies and transportation studies that may come out broadly to support all, um, this one was a little bit different animal. Um, and, and, and so in other words, why did why couldn't we just take this one out of capital transportation fund? I thought it was there. Two, um, should it come out of our SPLOS part of transportation as um, a need? I don't have a problem moving it up the list if it's that important and, and we need to match. Or three, coming out of the general fund. I mean, those are our typical three sources um, short of anything else. General fund, money we probably gave to the capital transportation fund, and every now and then you have a SPLOS. And so the question is, where do we pull this from? This is not um, if we do it, Mr. Mulcair, mm -hmm. where do we do it? Where do we do it? Yeah. And there was an amount that was already included in the capital transportation fund, but it wasn't enough Correct. to cover the cost that came in through the RFP. Mm -hmm. I see. And my recording in my brain uh, slipped a cog. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, would you quote those numbers again? And, uh, I can figure out our match. You're talking about it was an, an increased amount. Yes. Uh, let me see if I can. The agenda item today is 354.5 thousand. Yeah, I, I don't have those numbers uh, real handy, but, uh, but it is, uh, my recollection is that it was 230, uh, um, now let me let me try and find that number because what I'm pretty sure about is that we need an, another hundred twenty thousand. And that's what this uh, three hundred fifty-four thousand five hundred is is a revised number. Yes. Okay. That is the total amount needed. And uh, and that would be uh, eighty percent federally funded. Well, in this particular case, it wouldn't fall at 80%. It started out at 80%, but mm -hmm. because of the increase, the increase is absorbed by the county. So, so we would still receive the same amount of federal funding as we had originally. Mr. Yeah. Smoker, this is where I'm back to, you yeah. know, like, again, the capital transportation bond is being able to take advantage of strategic opportunities that they believe with us. Yeah. Um, uh, I, Again, we, this is something that hopefully during the budget process will stand. We, we need to make sure we replace this because we, for little moments like this, we need an extra hundred thousand yeah. uh, for whatever reason. That's what it was for. That was it for. So, I have no problem. I won't belabor this. I just want us to talk about this. I have no problem with amending it. I just want to know where you want to. You know, it's going to be figured out. You want to bring it up to the full board of commissioners yeah. and let them weigh at it. Yeah. No, it's on the agenda today. I understand. Yeah. So. But where's your leading? Would you entertain just a general fund? Do we have enough in um, uh, our general fund, Mark, to make the adjustment? That would be my first one. Yeah, we gave 500000 back to accommodate. We just trying to go not aware at the end of the year, can we? Yeah. Otherwise, we'll ask for a million to go into the capital transportation fund. So that's pay me now, pay you later. Yeah. What do you think? We got enough? Yeah, there's money in the fund balance. In then we're good. That's my preference. All right, we'll go with that. So there's no recommendation we talked about it. We said let it come before the full board of commissioners for discussion as far as where this is it's coming out of the general fund, not the capital transportation fund. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And it's only the difference. In other words, we're not saying take the whole amount. Is you going to give us the specific numbers? Oh, so CTF should. would be what we had budgeted. Correct. And the additional amount would come from the general fund. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And again, one more time, and Commissioner Mulgar, again, it looks like you may have one more. Um, committee meeting, which is the need for us to transportation wise, how do we plan long term for all of these, for maintenance, for all these things that we really historically never did. So, Miguel, you and Commissioner Mulcair, I need you to you know, pull on him as much as possible to get an ideal world. How do we approach transportation? How do we plan ourselves? Um, and how do we lay down, um, do, you know, how do we codify uh, what we intend to do um, to help us avoid running into these one off moments? Is that there? Or, or, handle, or to handle the one off moments? To handle the one off. Mm -hmm. you know I mean that that so uh, I know we have a capital transportation plan. Uh, no, no, what do we have? We have a transportation study, and what else do we have? We have a comprehensive plan that had a transportation component in it, right? Correct. It's that level below that. You know, how do we lay that out? How do we bring that to life? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Mark? Mm -hmm. Anything else needs to come for us, guys? We gotta go. I don't need to jam us, but no. anything else? Mr. Watson? We're good. Okay. Um, if there's nothing needs to come before this, can we let this meeting stand adjourned? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Labor.